Good afternoon to you. I'm Danilo Evangelista, and welcome to our Tropical Weather Outlook for Wednesday, the 1st of August now. We're now into the month of August 2024. We're going over 97L today, which is looking like the potential for a threat to the United States and especially portions of Florida is increasing. And obviously, we're going to talk about that and a lot more going on today in the tropics. So let's get started. First off, in the Atlantic with the Tropical Weather Bulletin from the National Hurricane Center there. As of two o'clock, we got 97L, Invest Area 97L. Um, it has a high chance now of formation over the next um, week, up to a 70% chance. So there is very high confidence that we will be looking at something um, that is of tropical interest. Um, once again, especially for portions of the Southeast, increasingly the Gulf side now, instead of several days ago, we were where we were looking at a lot more of a Southeast threat. Um, the chances are really beginning to increase in Florida now. And the National Hurricane Center, though, says that um, interests across the Greater Antilles, the Bahamas, and Florida should continue to monitor the progress of this system. Um, so there's that. So there's 97L, and we'll be looking at model guidance as well later on because it is very warm in the Gulf. Conditions are looking very favorable for 97L, and this could be a pretty decent threat, not just a potential, you know, general tropical threat, um, but from the standpoint of intensity, this could get pretty, pretty decent, and especially from the standpoint of rain, this could be a pretty big rainmaker, especially for Florida and the Southeast, which is in and of itself a pretty big tropical threat. In the Eastern Pacific, though, really quickly, just want to get this out of the way. There is activity going on in the Eastern Pacific. Tropical storm Carlota, which has formed uh, maximum sustained winds, 70 miles per hour, 60 miles per hour. Well, it's going to be 70 soon, I imagine. And a minimum central pressure of 997 millibars. Moving to the west-northwest at 12 miles an hour, this is going to move away from Mexico and probably become a hurricane. And let's really quickly look at the track, actually, and you can see it moves off away from the Mexican coast. Let's actually open this in a new tab. Um, you can see it becomes a hurricane by the National Hurricane Center. It'll probably remain a hurricane for a few days as it moves out to sea. Um, probably will be decently strong enough, as I mentioned, over the last several days that we will see possibly um, swells and increased rip current risks along the Mexican coast. And that is certainly an impact um, in and of itself, but we are not going to get a direct impact from the storm. It's looking harmless. Um, a fish storm is what, or a fish storm as we like to call it, is what it looks like Carlota will be, and probably not much more than that. And then we have another area behind it um, to the southeast, which has a 90% chance of formation. This will probably become our next name storm in the Eastern Pacific. And this also looks like it could potentially become a pretty decent system once again as it moves out to sea. So we have the Eastern Pacific once again becoming more dominant in activity, but there is no immediate threat to land there um, for now. Here's a satellite picture of the Atlantic and the Pacific. You can see all the activity happen happening. You can see Carlota, pretty decent storm, but it's also very small. Um, the, in, the surrounding environment, there's a lot of dry air in the surrounding environment, especially as this heads more towards the west, northwest, and that'll probably be some sort of factor um, into the storm. But the storm itself is looking pretty good, not far off from becoming a hurricane, I think, and it'll once again probably do so as it moves to the west, north, west northwest. Um, in the Atlantic, though, the other dominant feature um, is 97L, and you can see it pretty clearly um, over the Hispaniola Island right now, um, bringing showers and thunderstorms to Haiti and the Dominican Republic and also through the southern Bahamas as well. And those in those areas and Cuba, um, they'll be getting some pretty gusty winds and heavy rains over the next several days. So if you're in those areas, keep that in mind, especially with your plans. Um, and even though this is not a tropical system right now or a tropical storm or it has, you know, a name, um, it, I mean, it has actually some sort of designation. So this is some sort of, you know, designated tropical entity, but it's not a fully developed tropical cyclone. That's my point. Um, this will still bring gusty winds and heavy rains to the greater Antilles um, and, and southern Bahamas. And that will still cause an inconvenience because we still get those kind of impacts in a tropical system, in a, you know, tropical cyclone that is fully developed. Obviously, it's on a less of a scale here 
since it's not a fully developed system, but there will still be impacts with rain and gusty winds. And once again, if you're in those areas, keep in mind of those impacts over the next several days. Um, in terms of the 850 millibar vorticity signature, I mean, that's also another thing to point out is that this is still, you know, a tropical wave and tropical waves still have energy. And that is definitely, you know, some sort of energy that will be exerted um, with these thunderstorms that we will get from the system, even if it's not well organized. Um, but in terms of organization of this system, it is obviously interacting with Hispaniola right now and the Greater Antilles. Um, which is why, as this moves over the next several days, or at least in the next two to three days, probably will not see much development out of this system unless it actually goes south of Cuba, which I've seen some models um, suggesting that, or at least with the hurricane models. Um, but the best chance we're looking at development will be once it gets into the open eastern gulf. Um, and that's when it'll probably be over open water, and that'll that'll then be where it has the best chance um, for development. And that's when we'll probably get a lot more of an of a vorticity signature, a lot with what we actually have with Carlota right now. This is the signature of a developed, a well defined and developed tropical storm. Um, we obviously don't have that with 97L right now, so we obviously have more work to go in terms of development, but it'll probably get there, especially once it gets into the Gulf. And I'll show you why. Just look at the sea surface temperatures, and this is all you really need to know, especially for development of this storm. Um, once it gets away from all the land interaction that it's gonna be dealing with over the next several days, it's really prime breeding ground in the Gulf. I mean, look at these sea surface temperatures, 30s and widespread, um, 31 Celsius readings all throughout the Eastern Gulf, especially near the Florida coast, um, which is why especially Florida needs to watch very closely for this storm. Um, because I have a, honest, a pretty sneaky suspicion, honestly, that this could be a situation that a lot of us are not, you know, aware of intensification. And these waters, 30s, 31s, are prime sea surface temperatures um, for rapid intensification, especially of a developing tropical system. Um, and especially that it's August now in the Gulf, we know how the story goes. If this is really going to be something we need to watch with 97L, especially as it's threatening Florida and portions of the Eastern Gulf and probably the Southeast as well um, with heavy rains. And I really want to quickly show you before we move on to the operational models, the latest, the first batch of the track guidance models for 97L, um, for the 18Z, they all take this into the Eastern Gulf. So um, that'll be its main area where it develops for at least a few days. It looks like it has a good solid two or so days where it will, where it will be over open water um, of the Gulf and probably a little bit more if it moves in, if it comes in a little bit further south, especially like some of these other, these more southerly, um, model guidance indicates. Maybe, you know, just maybe there might even be some development that occurs if this dips south of Cuba, because if we can really see, if we look for just a moment here, even south of Cuba, really, really warm sea surface temperatures. The whole Atlantic is very warm this year. And the bottom line is, um, a lot of the model guidance, obviously we cannot focus on a specific area right now, but they're generally all showing the Eastern Gulf and showing a potential threat to Western Florida, especially Northwestern Florida right now, um, looking more at the Panhandle and the general, you know, Northwestern part of Florida um, in the Gulf. That's the biggest area that the model guidance is honing in on right now, although that'll probably change over the next several days as, you know, things kind of um, ebb and flow um, with the development of 97L. So we have the model guidance. What does the GFS, start off with the GFS in terms of operational um, models, and let's see what they do with 97L. And you can see they kind of take that option that brings this over the Greater Antilles. Um, so we don't get much development out of this system um, for the next two or so days as it traverses through the Greater Antilles. Obviously, land interaction, which will prevent any sort of major development to occur um, soon, but just watch as this moves north of Cuba at 48 hours, and then as soon as it just moves into the Gulf, look at that, from 48 to 66 to 72 hours, within a day, it literally becomes nothing 
into what seems like on the vorticity signature a pretty defined um tropical storm and then right at hour 90 even before that moves very quickly into northwestern florida um so there's that first part which will probably be pretty quick um organization and intensification in the gulf um we just saw how warm the, the waters are so that makes sense and then once that happens moves into florida and then the gfs kind of does this weird thing where it's off the east coast but then notice um from that point onward notice especially to take it out into time just how slowly it moves off or how slowly it moves especially once we get into the four to five day time frame and in this run they keep it off the east coast but not going to focus too much on the exact location of the system right now the main thing i want to point out is how slowly the system begins to move um in the five day time frame up to the next seven days it moves from the carolinas um basically only moves and basically it scrapes the carolinas coast for about two days so this storm significantly um slows down um there's a trough to the north that i think the storm doesn't feel um, and kind of gets trapped in it, the ridging, the steering becomes weak. Um, and some models, because of that, and it'll really depend as well where this, where the, um, how the ridging and the troughing sets up, because if this misses the trough that it'll have to the north, some of the models, instead of kind of slowing it down off the east coast, like the GFS has, and even earlier runs of the GFS models, instead of that, they had the storm slowing down right over Florida, and even over even over portions of the Gulf still that this storm significantly slowed down and almost completely stalled instead of kind of being inside of instead of kind of moving along like the GFS shows. A model that does also show more of a moving along signal. Um, and it was kind of a little different yesterday, but this is a more, you know, a more ideal option, at least in terms of the flooding threat. Um, the CMC kind of shows a, a scenario where the system does move along a lot quicker, does actually also pretty quickly intensify or get together while it's in the Gulf, although it does keep it very close um, to the western coast of Florida, moves in at around four days and then five days, it kind of moves out. I guess it latches onto the trough, so it's able to move in, move along the Carolinas coast and then move out. And then obviously because of that, we wouldn't have as much of a rainfall threat. Um, but very interestingly enough, when you look at the European though, they still show, and this is probably the most concerning uh, um, scenario of all the three is when you look at the European, um, they kind of show this system not developing too much, I guess, um, in the Gulf, although the European kind of has a lower resolution. So I'm not really entirely sure about the Genesis with what the European is showing, but watch. They keep this piece of energy, moves it into Florida over day four, but then at day five to day seven, very similar to the GFS, this thing slows down significantly and then just kind of hangs around in the same general region for about two to three days. Um, in fact, tour, if, if, in fact, all the way to the end of the run on the European this time, all the way up till day 10, this storm kind of hangs up, hangs around the southeast um, and kind of, you know, the steering's current dr dramatically collapses and the storm doesn't really do much in terms of movement except hang around. And the wonders that'll do for the flood threat, it's going to be a pretty significant thing. And this will be, it'll be something that we need to watch over the next day, over the next several days very closely because just shift the, the potential area that this storm stalls just a few hundred miles over to the west, or potentially if this storm stalls over land instead of off the southeast, like the GFS and the current 12Z European shows now, that's gonna mean a very, very heightened rainfall risk um, and probably widespread flooding, which that is a whole other part that is gonna be monitored that's gonna to have to be monitored very closely over the next several days. And that'll probably encompass a lot of areas throughout the Southeast and not just Florida. Florida seems like it's the main threat right now for a potential landfall from whatever this system is. 
Um, but over the southeast, the rainfall will probably be a big thing. And even right now, if you look at the rainfall threat over the next several days by the Weather Prediction Center, you could see as the storm moves into Florida, you could even see some of the values here already up to potentially, I guess, a foot of rain in some areas as the storm moves in. And I guess they're kind of going with the option that this remains off the Carolinas coast instead of having more of the rain over the southeast. But either way, rainfall will be a big issue with this system. Besides whatever it does in the eastern Gulf, things are definitely getting interesting. And once again, if you're in Florida and all throughout the southeast, I would pay very close attention to this system because um, things will get very interesting over the next several days and we'll definitely have a lot on our table um, to keep tabs on for sure. So we're gonna do that. I'm definitely gonna be posting a lot more over the next several days, but coverage actually will not end today because I am planning on doing a live stream at six o'clock, obviously to talk about 97L, as well as potentially talking about the future beyond 97L and looking towards the rest of the hurricane season. I'm going to have new updated predictions um, tonight at six o'clock on YouTube. So if you're just on my channel for the first time um, and you want to see what I'm going to do tonight at six, I'll really appreciate it if you subscribe, if you haven't already, like this video, um, share with family and friends, keep them informed, especially though if you have any loved ones or family um, in Florida that you want to inform about this system definitely do so and tune in tonight at six. We're gonna talk about the future of the season. Um, what about La Nina? How is that looking like for the rest of the season? And obviously as well, more near-term um, future in terms of potentially if there's anything that we could be watching for um, after 97L in terms of specific um, kind of systems. We're all gonna go over that later this afternoon. So. Hope to see you there. Stay tuned for sure. Um, I'm going to post live stream on Twitter as well, because um, I do have a Twitter too, if you want to follow me there. Same name as I have here on YouTube, Zanilo Evangelista. Um, follow that, and you also get latest information as well there as well. Lots to go over, and lots of information that will definitely be throwing around over the next several days. Once again, as the potential threat for Florida will definitely be increasing, um, from 97L. With that being said, not much else to go over today. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Have a safe one, a blessed one as well. Peace, love, and kindness to you all, and we will see you later.